Hi, my name is Kat and you're watching Kat Rose Astrology. And so this is an episode in my series, The Astrology of Personality, where we're looking at all 12 rising signs and the personalities associated with them, particularly through the lens of the ruling planet or the lord of that sign going through the houses. So you'll have 12 different nuanced versions of each rising sign, if that makes sense. If you want to learn more about how this series works and how it's put together, then check out the video I've linked above here somewhere and in the description. That's the introduction to this series. So today let's take a look at the personality of Gemini rising. So Gemini's ruling planet is Mercury, and I'll be getting a bit more into Mercury in a second. The archetypal image of, of Gemini is the twins. The quadruplicity of Gemini is mutable. So mutable signs are the, one, are the ones that come just before the change of a season. So in the case of Gemini, it's from the change to spring into summer. Uh, so there's a sense that they have a dual nature. They're a little bit of the cardinal signs, that, that sense of new beginnings, uh, new starts, um, being able to you know, uh, initiate things. And they're a little bit of the, the fixed energy as well. Fundamentally, they're about flexibility and change. The triplicity of Gemini is air. And the air element is the element that we associate very much with society, communications. Uh, it's the mind. It's the world of ideas and inspiration things that exist kind of in the ether before they come into manifest reality. To summarize, the archetype of Gemini in astrology represents things like communication, intellect, and versatility. Geminis are known for their lively and adaptable nature, thriving on curiosity and continuous learning. They excel in various forms of communication and enjoy engaging with others. Geminis often possess a natural charm and are skilled at networking and making connections with others. The versatility allows them to pursue multiple interests simultaneously, although they may struggle with uh, sticking to one thing and sometimes restlessness. Now, when we think about Gemini, we're really channeling its ruling planet, Mercury. Mercury is a planet that represents communication, intellect, and adaptability. The trickster that was known as Hermes by the Greeks embodies curiosity and effective communication skills. It governs how we gather, process, and share information promoting mental agility and clarity. Mercury influences our problem-solving abilities, networking skills, and the pursuit of knowledge, and encourages versatility and adaptability in thought and in action. So now let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury through each of the signs and the houses, starting with Gemini rising with Mercury in the first house in Gemini. So having the ruling planet in your first house in Gemini means your personality will naturally take on lots of those qualities of Mercury, and the archetypal nature of Gemini will be readily accessible to you. Mercury in Gemini brings a quick-witted and communicative energy to the intellect and thought processes. Individuals with this placement have a natural curiosity and very versatile mind. They possess excellent communication skills and are very adept at expressing their thoughts and ideas. Mercury in Gemini fuels their need for mental stimulation and constant learning. They thrive and they can engage in lively discussions, exchange new information, and explore a variety of interests. This placement also highlights their love of language, writing, and socializing. With Mercury in the first house, they find their intellectual fulfillment and personal expression through their communication style, through their self-expression, and their ability to adapt to different situations. Now let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the second house in Cancer. So Mercury in Cancer brings a more intuitive and sensitive energy to, to the intellect and thought process. Individuals with this placement have a deep emotional intelligence and a nurturing nature. They possess excellent memory and are highly attuned to the feelings and needs of others. Mercury in Cancer fuels their need for emotional connection and understanding. They thrive and they can communicate and express their thoughts and ideas in a caring and compassionate manner. Placement also may highlight their love for history, family, and creating a cozy home environment. Mercury, however, cannot see the ascendant from this position by aspect. So the individual might have to put an extra legwork or to look, or look at another planet in order to assert their own needs. And there may be a life story around understanding their own values and skills and what they bring to the table. With Mercury and Cancer in the second house, they find their intellectual fulfillment and personal expression through their values, financial, financial matters, and building a sense of security for themselves. 
Now let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the third house in Leo. Mercury in Leo brings a creative and expressive energy to this person. Individuals with this placement have a dramatic and confident way of communicating. They possess a charismatic and theatrical nature, often capturing the attention of others with their words. Mercury and Leo fuels their need for recognition and self-expression. They thrive when they can share their ideas and passion and enthusiasm with others. This placement also may highlight their love for the arts, entertainment and creative projects. With Mercury in a harmonious sextile to the Ascendant, this person is likely to, to be able to identify their, their needs very easily and find a place for healthy creative pursuits and hopefully channel their wit into productive outlets. With Mercury and Leo in the third house, they find intellectual fulfillment through their communication, with whether it's with siblings, neighbors, old friends, and their immediate environment. Now, now let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the fourth house in Virgo. Mercury is both at home and exalted in the earthy sign of Virgo, bringing a practical and analytical energy to the intellect and thought process. Individuals with this placement have a detailed and oriented and organized approach to thinking. They possess a keen eye for detail and a very meticulous nature. Mercury and Virgo fuels their need for efficiency and preci precision in their communication. They thrive when they can apply their analytical skills to problem solving and helping others. This placement also highlights their love for health, wellness, and practical skills. Mercury is in a square to the ascendant here, which isn't terrible news, but it can bring a sense of tension, which makes sense with the very playful qualities of Gemini being in direct conflict with the more practical and grounded nature of Virgo. With Mercury and Virgo in the fourth house, they find intellectual fulfillment and personal expression through their connection to their home, their family, and their roots. Now taking a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the fifth house in Libra, so Mercury in Libra brings a more diplomatic and harmonious energy to this individual. They may have a very balanced and fair-minded approach to communication and thinking. They possess uh, excellent interpersonal skills and really value cooperation and collaboration. Mercury in Libra fuels their need for social harmony and intellectual stimulation, um, particularly in relationships. They thrive when they can engage in meaningful conversations and find common ground with others. This trine to the Ascendant connects their creative pursuits and allows them to express their individuality with passion and charisma, identifying with their love for the arts and creativity in general. With Mercury and Libra in the fifth house, they find intellectual fulfillment through creativity, play, and their relationships with children or romantic partners. Now taking a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the sixth house in Scorpio. Mercury in Scorpio brings an intense and investigative energy to the intellect. Individuals with this placement have a penetrating and perceptive approach to life and communication. They possess a deep curiosity and a desire to uncover hidden truths. They make for great detectives, for example. Mercury in Scorpio fuels their need for depth and transformation in their intellectual pursuits and things that they're uh, researching. They thrive when they can delve into complex subjects and engage in meaningful conversations. This placement also highlights a potential love for psychology, the occult, and an understanding of the deeper layers of existence. Unable to see the ascendant by whole sign aspects, they may become overly secretive, maybe even paranoid, unable to know when enough is enough when it comes to research, to digging down into things, and that can be to the detriment of their well-being and health. With Mercury and Scorpio in the sixth house, they might find fulfillment and personal expression through their work, through daily routines and health methods. Now take, let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the seventh house in Sagittarius. Mercury in Sagittarius brings an expansive and philosophical outlook to life. Individuals with this placement have a broad-minded and optimistic approach and that is expressed through their communication style. They possess a love for learning, adventure, and exploring new horizons. Mercury and Sag fuels their need for intellectual freedom and the pursuit of truth. They thrive when they can engage in philosophical discussions and share their knowledge with others. This placement also highlights a potential love for travel, higher education, and exploring different cultures. However, this is the sign of Mercury's detriment. Far away from Gemini, Mercury will be attempting to act in a Jupiterian way here, 
which means that while Mercury is naturally inclined to consider multiple perspectives and make impartial judgments, in Sagittarius, these individuals may have a tendency to take sides prematurely or form preconceived notions before all the facts are known. While their minds may lack impartiality, their intuition is strong, and these individuals are guided by their instincts, even when they can't explain the logic basis behind those intuitions. Mercury and Sag in the seventh house, they find intellectual fulfillment through their partnerships, relationships, and interactions with others. Now let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the eighth house in Capricorn. Mercury in Capricorn brings a practical and strategic energy to this individual. They may have a very disciplined and focused approach to life. And they potentially possess a very strong sense of responsibility and value efficiency and productivity. Mercury and Capricorn fuels their need for structure and organization in their intellectual pursuits. They thrive when they can apply their knowledge to achieve tangible results. This placement also highlights their love for business, leadership, and long-term planning. However, as Mercury is unable to see the ascendant by aspect, there may be a sense of frustration with their ability to know what is it that they want, working for the sake of work or serving others for the sake of serving others, rather than what they desire. With Mercury and Capricorn in the eighth house, they find intellectual fulfillment and personal expression through joining resources with others, helping others out, uh, potentially managing things like finances, like debts and loans and things like that. Now let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the ninth house in Aquarius. So Mercury in Aquarius brings an innovative and unconventional energy to this individual. They may possess a keen intellect and a love for intellectual freedom and social progress. Mercury in Aquarius fuels their need for originality and intellectual stimulation. They thrive when they can engage in unconventional ideas and contribute to collective thinking. This placement also highlights their love for technology, humanitarian causes, and social activism. With Mercury now in a trine to the ascendant, they have a forward thinking and independent approach to life, able to communicate their ideas clearly. With Mercury in the ninth house, they may find intellectual fulfillment and personal expression through higher education, philosophical exploration, and expanding their horizons. Now let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the 10th house in Pisces. Mercury in Pisces brings an imaginative and intuitive energy to this individual. People with this placement may have a dreamy and compassionate approach to life. They possess a sensitive and empathetic nature, often tapping into the collective unconscious. Mercury in Pisces fuels their need for emotional connection and artistic expression. They thrive when they can channel and cr their creativity and express themselves through things like poetry, music, or other artistic forms of expression. This placement also highlights their love for spirituality, mysticism, and connecting with the divine. Mercury is in a square to the ascendant in Gemini here, and in its fall and detriment here, and this placement can be reflected in unclear, foggy, short processes, and an over-reliance on intuition rather than being able to weigh up facts or logical arguments. With Mercury and Pisces in the 10th house, they find intellectual fulfillment and personal expression through their career, public image, making a positive impact on society, potentially through the arts. Now let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the 11th house in Aries. Mercury in Aries brings a bold and assertive energy to the intellect and thought process. Individuals with this placement have a direct and decisive approach to life. They possess a quick mind and are eager to express their ideas and opinions. Mercury in Aries fuels their need for intellectual independence and taking the lead in their intellectual pursuits. They thrive when they can engage in lively debates and assert themselves. Their, this placement also highlights their love for competition, new beginnings, and pioneering ideas. Mercury is in a harmonious sextile to the ascendant here, and that may reflect in the individual strongly identifying with the communities or groups they're associated with and taking on leadership roles when available. With Mercury in the 11th house, they find intellectual fulfillment and personal expression through friendships, group activities, and contributing to collective goals. And finally, let's take a look at Gemini rising with Mercury in the 12th house in Taurus. Mercury in Taurus brings a practical and grounded energy to the intellect and thought process. Individuals with displacement have a patient and deliberate approach to life. 
They possess a steady mind and value reliability and consistency. Mercury and Taurus fuels their need for stability and tangible results in their intellectual pursuits. They thrive when they can apply their knowledge in a practical and methodical manner. This placement also highlights their love for the arts, beauty, and cultivating a sense of harmony. Unable to see the first house or the ascendant, they may struggle with fixity of thought, getting stuck on a certain way of seeing themselves or thought patterns that are tough to break. With Mercury in the 12th house, they might find intellectual fulfillment through introspection, spiritual exploration, and connecting with their subconscious mind. So I hope that was helpful in terms of finding out more about what your rising sign really means in terms of personality and gives you a bit more of a detailed look at what that uh, what that looks like using traditional astrology techniques. If you're interested in diving a bit deeper into your entire birth chart, I do offer birth chart consultations. Just go to my website, catroseastrology.com, and you'll find out more there. I also have a weekly newsletter where I send my musings on the current astrology, different kinds of offerings that I've got, and a uh, link to these videos as well so you won't miss, miss the next one that's coming out. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about that, you can sign up on my website again at catroseastrology.com. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you next time.